There could be quite a noise here today. Confirmland have won only two of 14 league games since the break. In that time, they've lost 24 goals, nearly two goals a game against them. As we remind ourselves of the two teams, injuries have played a part in this Rangers starting 11. Stephen Hughes and Peter Lovenkrantz both ruled out. Claudio Canizia in for one of his rare starts, but he does like that firm win six goals already against the Pars this season. He's got a great record, Canizia. But when you look at the, the Rangers team, they'll play a normal 4 3 3 to start with. But don't be too surprised if Ron Bavour pushes up beside Michael Moles to make it a 4 2 4. And as Canizia and Avalazzi move inside, Fernando Rickson and Nathan Newman will almost become wingers. Dunfermline, no Scarlett or Thompson, no Hunter Hampshire, no Kilgannon. So Jimmy Calderwood makes just the one change from the team which drew with Kilmarnock last weekend. That means Frenchman David Grondin back in the starting lineup. I think Jimmy Calderwood's team will be prepared to be put under constant pressure today, right from the first minute. And Gus McPherson at the back there, he's got to make sure he marshals his back four to cope with the waves of attack that are going to come at them. And up front, Craig Brewster and Stevie Croft, they'll be trying to keep a hold of the ball, take the pressure off the defenders, and also maybe try to stick a goal on the break. And Alec McLeish already rallying the troops, he's been applauding the fans, they've been giving him the same back in response as he looks for the energy of the Ibrox support to drive his team towards that finishing line. Claudio Canizia has started only 13 games up till today, but he has struck 11 times, and incredibly, more than half those goals have come against Dunfermline. It could be Lorenzo Amoruso's penultimate game in a Rangers shirt. He'll play in the cup final next weekend, and then he could be on the move to Blackburn Rovers. Stuart Dougal takes charge of this vital 90 minutes. They have both lost to Motherwell and drawn with Aberdeen, Dundee and Kilmarnock. The only difference in results is Celtic's defeat at Hearts against their two wins to one league record against Rangers. The old firm barely able to be separated. Onside, uh, Ronald De Boer and Claudio Canizia couldn't catch the long ball from Amoruso and what Dunfermline will feel they can't afford to do here is concede early. It's an early warning, Ronald De Boer may just have been offside there, the ball went too long anyway, but the assistant referee in the far side, he didn't give it, and that man there, Ronald De Boer, right at the start of the game, we thought he'd maybe play just advancing three in the middle of the park, but right on, early on he's up beside Michael Moles, and that's a clear warning from Alan McLeish, Rangers are certainly going to go for it early. He's looking at his watch already. We've only played 55 seconds. Up goes Michael Moles, won a good header. And he was clattered into by the former Rangers player, Scott Wilson. Free kick given. Rangers so eager to get an early strike. For once, Ronald Bear's touch lets him down, but he's been outstanding. He was the match winner, undoubtedly, last weekend. He's scored 19 goals already this season, and he's played nearly double the games he's played last season, which was probably the crucial factor. His real quality in Ronald Debeur, he scores so many important goals for Rangers, but every bit is important to the team, he makes so many goals, he's got marvellous vision. Amoruso's header, that's Gary Mason, that's Mikel Arteta. The skipper, back to Arthur Newman, his last game at Ibrox. Bolton seem to be leading the race at the moment to sign Arthur Newman when he ends his five-year spell here. And it looks as if Amoruso on the ball, he too will be bidding farewell shortly. Ricks it, exchanges passes with Kinesia. Mother 
Don Philman uh, chasing the ball at this stage. The burst pass to Kanisha. The pass was behind balls. But he got the shot away. He got the shot in. Two and a half minutes gone. Rangers are ahead, and that could be a huge stride towards the title. It's a great start from Rangers. That man, that man there, Michael Moore, scores so many important goals at Ibrox. But it's great player, all the boo, Kinesia, Michael Moore, just staying on side. He doesn't catch this one properly, but it's on target, and as, soon as, as long as it's on target, you always got a chance of scoring. But it's great adjustment here. Goalkeeper just can't reach, and it sneaks in. I think that's a remarkable finish from Michael Moles. You wouldn't have put too much money on him when the pass was played behind him. One touch got it under control. One touch got enough on the ball to get it beyond. Derek Stilley from Michael Moles, 14th goal of the season. Now Rangers have their tails up. Kanesia in for Ronald De Boer. How did he miss? It should have been two after just three minutes. What a chance. Great play again from Rangers, brilliant ball forward. Kanija does exceptionally well here, looks up, finds the boor, times his run to perfection. But LB, he wouldn't believe he's missed this. All he's got to do is get it on target, still he wouldn't have any chance, and it could have been two. Michael Moles scoring his 14th goal of the season, and only one of those goals away from Ibrox. He likes it here. Well, that's why he's starting this game today. He didn't do particularly well at Tynecastle last week. But here in front of the Rangers fans, he's a hero for them. I think we are uh, safe to assume that uh, Alec McLeish will be happy with the way Rangers have started here, Chick. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen him so fired up. Let me tell you one of the things he's put into play, Rob. He's got six of the youth team, the under-18 team, around to add to the ball boy collection. Ten ball boys, six of the youth team, to make sure the ball's fired back into play. Not a minute, a minute to be wasted as the chase. The goals tally, a little added tactic there from the youth team, from the Rangers manager. One ball from Barry Ferguson. It's beyond the balls this time and away, but uh, as you marvel at the way Rangers have started this game, you would have to say as well that uh, Dunfermline are in complete disarray. But there are the important statistics in the top corner of your screen. Rangers have extended their goal difference and goals scored. Two goals scored better off, and in terms of goal difference, they are one in front of Celtic. But uh, psychologically, that is some start. It was so important to start well. Everyone said that. I'm sure Celtic are trying to do the same thing down at Rugby Park, but Rangers certainly get their, their, their heads up now. They're really playing with lots of confidence. And up front, Michael Moore's wrong to burn for the Canadian. They look so sharp. Amoruso launches it towards Claudio Canizia, who can't take that chance a moment ago for De Boer. Good turn from Moles, and he was fouled, he was held, and Rangers have a set piece. It's taken quickly. And He's offside. An offside flag. But uh, I was looking at the De Boer chance, Sandy, and the Feldman were in a mess. They're all over the place. I think they're, they're still shocked to say the least at the start of this match, and that man there on De Boer. He's so excited, he's shaking his head, yeah, I'm sure. He still can't believe he missed that opportunity. He's got loads of, loads of time to make up for it. But uh, you have to have some sympathy for Dunfermline here. They are playing a supporting role, and uh, the bulk of the attendance in here clearly wants this match to go only one way. Arusso for De Boer. Good challenge from Mason. He's got his work cut out, but Danny Mason has got the ball back. Well, Dunfermline with five or six passes, and that's the best they've managed so far. Chris McGrotty into the feet of Craig Brewster. As Dunfermline try to get themselves together. Shaken and stirred after that incredible Rangers opening. Just look at Robert Dunfermline for Mason. Gary Mason's started the game middle of the park, but because Ronald De Boer's pushed up the side moves, he's actually into the back four to make it almost a flat back five, which is different. De Boer to Newman. Always the goal scorer. Back to the shot at Avalanta. So much fluidity about the Rangers team. Interchangeable in so many ways. And that causes problems for the opposition. 
Ferguson's pass tries to pick out the pace of Rickson, but couldn't quite get there. Michael Moles did get there with uh, the early strike, and uh, it was a remarkable bit of finishing, really, because the, the pass towards him from Canizio wasn't great, but he got enough on it, got it away from the despairing hand of Derek Stilley, and the spin on the ball took it off the inside of the post, and it just about reached the back of the net. It's a good striker's goal, isn't it? A poacher's goal, if you want to put it that way. I keep saying it's all about hitting the target, you've got to have belief in the fact that you can stick the ball in the back of the net, and Michael Moles has got that stand like Ibrox. I just noticed Alec McLeish stomping out of his dugout and up to the touchline, and as you said, Chick, he's well charged up. Well, I tell you, he's having a go every time the ball is uh, stopped. He's, he's having a go at the referee to, every time the defender take the time over a goal kick, he's out at the edge of the dugout, telling the referee with the old universal look at the watch, pointing the fingers to the wrist, saying time added on. He's screaming at his players every time there's a free kick and a throw in to take it quickly. I don't think you'll ever see a football match but the ball is in play, and remember these added ball boys as well, the youth team around the pitch, he just wants the ball in play at all times. Well, Jimmy Calderwood has traded places with Alec McLeish right to the touchline, he was absolutely furious a few seconds ago as David Gronda relinquished possession on the far side, and again, Calderwood looking so unhappy that his team is incapable of keeping the ball. You've got to keep the ball, that's the best form of defence, you can hold up the ball, make a few passes, it takes the pressure off, and maybe collides the crowd a little bit as well. for Rolls, not quite one, picked away by Wilson, first there is Rickson. Good pass to Canizia, but the return but didn't quite match that standard. From Grondin to Stilly. Two and a half minutes, that's all it took. Rangers to hit the front. It was exactly the start they wanted. You wonder what the reaction here might have been if they firmly held out for the first 20 minutes or so. It wasn't to be for them, and uh, now Jimmy Calderwood will hope that they don't crumble. It's a huge test of character, and he'll find out this afternoon just what sort of strength of spirit this player has had. Well, Jimmy's had a, a great spell as manager of the firm. I've had a great early part for the season. Be absolutely right if find out one or two bits about his players that he maybe didn't know before this game. Amoruso clears. Avalanza first there. Lee Bullen as well. And Tata glides away from Nicholson. Pass to Moles. That's a great challenge from Scott Wilson. Timed it perfectly. Now for Brewster. Holding it up, Greg Brewster, waiting to get some straight shirts forward alongside him. McPherson. Nicholson. His first point there was to get out of the way of Stuart Dugo. Brewster again. Did enough to keep it. Jason Dare. Nicholson threads it through for Gronda. And he manages to flick it wide for McGrorty. And Fernland enjoying being on the ball. Hasn't happened too often so far. Crawford for Bullen. Early ball in, Booster. Laid off. And then Fernland are level. Jason Dare has equalised. And Ibrox is silenced. 11 minutes gone, it's 1-1. You won't see a better strike than this one. Good play from the Fairman, managed to hold on to the ball for the first time in the game. Craig Brewster involved, Stevie Crawford involved. That's a good early ball in. And Jason Dare doesn't hang about here, it's a good lay back, catches it so well. Step across, not much chance of saving it. It's stunning from Dunfermline. And uh, Jason Dare scores only his second goal of the season. And, well, you wonder what sort of reaction there'll be to that one at Rugby Park. It was so noisy here, and it's now gone so quiet. Detta's free kick, and the way by Nicholson, only as far as Avalata. Heavy with the cross, and the offside flag goes up. Most people in the ground, Alec McLeish included, still trying to take in that equaliser. Well, the shell shot was as simple as that. Uh, just before the goal, the Fairman had a fair amount of pressure, and I could see Big Alec, he was trying to get his players to go and close the ball down, trying to win it back. But they, they stood off just a little bit, allowed the Fairman to make a few uh, passes, and that's why there's a lot of uh, side faces here at this moment in time. Any 
Asia against Wilson on the Grote. No free kick. McPherson to Brewster. Now with Grondin. A scorer against Rangers in the cup, of course. And Maluso's headed away. Bullen. The goal scorer there. Tries to carve out another one. And Maluso's head. Back comes Kinesia to nip it away from Danny Gronda. Rickson to Moore. The Rangers try to collect themselves again and drive forward. Newman for Avalanta. in central midfield. Craig Moore. That's it back from Kinesia. That's aimed for Ronald De Boer. Such a good fortune there for Gary Mason in the way he managed to get that one clear. Crawford to Nicholson. Dunfermline encouraged. And that's a lovely layoff from Craig Brewster. Amoruso got there before Dia. Milo starting to play some pretty impressive football now, and nothing more impressive than the, the way they got that equaliser, and that's updated you on a goal difference which is identical again. Teta and off Nicholson. Kanisha. Poor ball in, and Lee Bullen can let it go. Wasn't the best of passes there from Claudio Canigia, but uh, I would look at shot after lads as well there. The way Rangers are playing, Avalanche is playing wide on the left-hand side, and when the ball comes in from the right, you would expect uh, the wide player to, to be able to support them. It's Rangers to Fairman on BBC One Scotland, and Kilmarnock Celtic on BBC Two Scotland. And you'll miss nothing here of uh, the game at Rugby Park either, because at uh, any key moments we'll show them to you, as well as the action here, and it's quite compelling at the moment. And Rangers clearly have the wind taken out of their sails somewhere. They have, they've got to pick it up again as they're trying to do now through Michael Moles. The Burr's layoff, Grote to Gronda, and back again. Amoruso to Rickson. Ronald De Boer, Rickson again, Kinesia! He likes Dunfermline, doesn't he? His seventh goal of the season against the East End Park side. And that has Rangers back in front, two goals to one, 16 minutes gone. This is a great finish, but Fernando Rickson plays a very important part in this. He, he could have gave this round one up, kept fighting for it, looking out for Cal finishing. Don't panic, don't hammer the ball, get it on target, pick your spot. Everything is so calm, collected, and that's why the ball's the back of the net. And that's what it meant to the manager. 2-1 Rangers, three goals in 16 minutes. It could be more. And really, for Kanisha against Dunfermline, it's just been remarkable this season. Five goals in the league against the Bars and one in each of the cup competitions. It's uh, not easy to see why they don't like him. That happens at times, but that was a quality final shot regardless of who you're playing against. Michael Moles. Slides it through, aiming for Kinesia. Let's hear from Chick. While all that was happening, all the, the rest of Ibrox was celebrating. Alec McLeish was out of a word with Arthur Newman. I think he wants them to get forward round the outside of Avalanche. Dare's obviously making a bit of progress. He wants to get him down that right Rangers left hand side, get forward, help Avalanche, and obviously still got a huge appetite for goals here. The Rangers gather. Given away by McGrorty, Ferguson intercepted. And now Barry Ferguson closing down so quickly in the midfield and piling the pressure on Dunfermline. They have come back once in this first half. Can they come back again? 
Good work from Barry Nicholson. And Scott Wilson, another former Rangers player, lofts it down for Brewster, who's was having his shirt pulled. Chris Sutton has scored for Celtic. One up at Rugby Park. 1-0 Celtic, 2-1 Rangers. Ronald De Boer, Michael Bowles. Good challenge, and he hooked the shot wide of target. He was pulling the trigger, and you just wondered whether the net behind Derek Stilley was going to be bulging again. This time, Moles denied. That's a great chance for Lee Bullen. Good, good play from the right fullback, tucking in, covering where he should be covering. Well, let's see Chris Sutton's goal then at Rugby Park from a corner kick. And Sutton strikes his 18th goal of the season. And that has Celtic ahead down the M77. <laughs> you thought it was going to be a good day. Crawford's pass goes astray, Bullen couldn't catch it, Rangers have possession with the throw. And if anyone's got a calculator, can you please keep track of this, it's not easy. Claudio Canizia to Ronald De Boer, gets to the byline, there's a good ball back. Gus McPherson got in the way of it, and then didn't clear. Mikel Arteta hits the deck. Stuart Dougal not interested. Gus McPherson should have got rid of that, and I think he knows it. He should have cleared it, but uh, well, I'd like to see that one again. Stuart Dougal was quite a bit away from it. That's well won by Arteta against McGrotti. If not the final ball, the Rangers were looking for, but... Uh, Arteta wondered about the penalty claim as we refresh our memories. Goal difference, 69 apiece for Rangers and Celtic. Rangers have now scored two goals more. Alec McLeish does a lot of scribbling on the touchline. I wonder if he's scribbling down the goals scored and the goals difference. Can we give a copy to us? <laughs> Moles gets the pass away to Ferguson. The Sunday sunshine, Moore, Ronald De Boer. Claudio Canizia, another tempting ball in. First there was Lee Bullen. Canizia tries again, a good diving catch from Derek Stilley, who's under siege in that Dunfermline goal. He's going to be a busy man, Stilley, but that's a good catch. Lots of confidence. It wasn't the, the worst crosses from Canadian. Well, oh, Craig Moore had his arms wrapped around Craig Brewster when the ball was in the air, spotted by Stuart Dougal, and then Ferland have a free kick. That's good play from Craig Brewster. Good experience backing into Craig Moore. Moore eventually having his arms around him. Well, they showed terrific character in coming back from that early goal down in Fairland. You wonder if they're capable of another one. Barry Nicholson with the free kick. Moore clears. Arteta downfield. And every time a roar goes round Ibrox, you wonder just what's happening at Rugby Park. But remember, you do have that game on BBC Two, this one on BBC One. You can't say we're not getting you the option. Crawford probing at the Rangers' defence, not probing well enough. And Newman with a comfortable cutout. Launches it now for Moles. And he won't get on the end of that. Let's refresh our memories. 22 minutes gone. Rangers 2, then Fern 1 1. Moles first, then Jason Deere. Then Claudio Canizia, it was Michael Moles who started the ball rolling. And Chris Sutton for Celtic at Rugby Park. Both old firm teams on course for the wins they so desperately want. 
Will it come down to goal difference? Will it come down to goals scored? Let me know when you find out. Well, I'm just checking Jimmy Crawford again. He's, he's moving things about in the, the middle of the park, especially. Stevie Crawford's dropped back to, to play midfield to make it five across the middle, leaving Craig Brewster up front on his own. And at this moment, I think Rangers are being outnumbered in the middle of the park. There's something on the place maybe has to have a look at. Still, he launches it. And Rickson lets it go. The only time has been a title playoff is in 1905, you'll remember, Sandy. Celtic beat Rangers 2 1 at Hamden. <laughs> I know you were there. I was a sub that day. Rangers and Dumbarton shared the title in 1891. Now you weren't around then, let's not push it. It's 17 years since the title was settled on goal difference. You were there then, Celtic denied hearts that time. Remember Aberdeen led on goal difference when they lost here to Rangers? That was 12 years back. And the last time the title challenge went to the final day was five years ago when Vim Janssen's Celtic came out on top. Ferguson eyeing the penalty area. Claudio Canisia peeling off, making a clever run. But Chris McGrorty cleared for Dunfermline. And you remember what that was like in 86 or what? I remember it well, Rob. Bad memories, unfortunately. But the title that day was in our hands and we couldn't get uh, the point we needed. McPherson played it off to Burr. Arbaladze to Moles. Michael Moles. Brilliant save, Derek Stilly. Otherwise, Rangers were 3-1 in front. That's top-class goalkeeping, and you can understand why he's been drafted into the Scotland Future squad. It's a great save. Michael Moles does everything right here. Ron de Boer involved, fighting for the ball. Eventually, it's a little one-two there. Michael Moles, great little slip. Does everything right. The goalkeeper doesn't see it to the last minute, but he makes a great save. Low down to his left-hand side. Top stuff from Stilly, who's lost an average of three goals a game to Rangers this season when he's been in goal, but it's uh, only the two so far. That's well won by Deere against Moles. Now Wilson plays it into the corner, but Rangers have a problem with Dvercik. Yeah, they do, Rob. He just indicated across to the medical staff at Ibrox that he's a little... I think it's a, a foot problem, actually changing his boot. He's getting a bit of treatment on the foot. In fact, just up at the top of his foot, a little bit of treatment there. Uh, but I think he will be able to continue, but he's getting the treatment at the moment, and he's had his boot off. And from Rickson to Moles, the goal-saving challenge from Scott Wilson. That's a great chance from Scott Wilson. Marvellous ball in from Rickson. Michael Moles does everything right, gets across the front of the defender again, but Wilson sticks out his foot, just does enough. Such a clever player, Moles, his movement is impeccable, and Scott Wilson had to react so quickly there, changes body movement, changes direction, and stretch out the boots to prod the ball clear. And that's a bad one by Amoruso on Brewster, free kick. And when Chick was saying Ronald De Boer was getting treatment, well, Chick, it's uh, the old sticking plaster, I don't know if it quite goes for his treatment, but uh, he was putting a sticking plaster on the top of his foot before putting the boots back on. Here's Stevie Crawford. Got himself into a dangerous position there, stretching the Rangers' defence, but the ball across goal wasn't really a terrific problem. I'm not sure this is a shot, but it's a quick free kick from Dunfermline. Stevie Crawford off his mark early. Could have been a cross, could have been a shot. Well, some of the party balloons are on the pitch already here at Ibrox. They've been blown across by the breeze. And those might cause a little bit of confusion just outside the Dunfermline box. And which one do you go for? Our lads are stopped by Bullen. Lee Bullen was on the transfer list, of course, at the start of the season. What a recovery he's made. Pretty much a Lee Wilkie performance from him. He's now a, a first pick for Jimmy Calderwood having looked as if he was on the way out. He plays that right-back position very well as well, Rob. He stopped Adver Lazio so far in this game. Not the best touch from Mikel Arteta. Adver Lazio, it is, who is being pretty well looked after at the moment by Lee Bullen. Missed a penalty, or a penalty saved at least, last Sunday. Scored a cracker the Sunday before against Kilmarnock. That was his 15th goal of the season. Wilson did well against Moles. Nicholson couldn't do much with it. 
And that's back in Rangers possession. Jimmy Collingwood's facial expression, a picture down there, as Dunfermline gave it away. It's been a really disappointing second half of the season for Dunfermline. They lit up the first half, but they've been unable to come up with the goods since the shutdown. De Boer, always a threat, always dangerous, always intelligent. But no free kick for him. Uh, no amount of screaming at Stuart Dougal will change the decision. I'm sure Dougal was right beside that incident there. Yeah. I'm sure he got it right. It's on a knife edge between Rangers and Celtic for the championship. Claudio Canizia in. It was beyond the burr. Rebull and thumped it behind. Rangers on a corner. Good play again. Canizia's movement was so good down the right hand side. Rebull and. He's, been, he's impressed me today, he's had to defend well. In the 29th minute at Ibrox, Rangers 2-1 ahead. Arteta's delivery, Craig Brewster was at the near post to head the ball away. Clever header from Ferguson, down to the feet of Arteta. And back to the captain. Now with Newman, squared for Rickson. Everyone back for Dunfermline as Rickson lofts it in. And Amoruso did so well to stop that crossing the line. Not a bad ball in either! Not a bad ball for Arbeladze to score Rangers third. We've not played half an hour and Rangers have a 3-1 lead. You can't see enough about Lorenzo Amoruso here. He's got no right to get this one, he keeps it in, but he's not happy with that, he wants the ball back in the box. That's a great delivery, Arbeladze attacks it really well, turns the ball across the goalkeeper to the far post. It's a great header, and still he's too close to still to give him a chance to react. It's a fine goal. And if that was a parting present from Lorenzo Amoruso, Alec McLeish was very appreciative. That's the type of uh, guts character it takes to win this type of match. And there's no to get more character than Lorenzo Amoruso. He wasn't just content to keep the ball in, he whipped in the most dangerous of crosses, and Arvaladze stooped to head in his 16th goal of the season. A goal two weeks ago, a missed penalty last week, and another strike from Shota Arvaladze this Sunday. And Ibrox is alive again. What an, atmosphere. what an atmosphere, Rob, sorry. We can hardly hear each other. It's incredible. What was that? <laughs> Kanesia is off and running again. De Boer and Moe sprinting into the box. Scott Wilson took charge, took responsibility and tried to keep Rangers at bay, but it's a tall order. It is, especially down that right-hand side. Claudio Kanesia's getting so much time and space. He's delivering magnificent balls out of the box. That's the Arteta eye view of a busy box. Nicholson's header away. That was Stevie Crawford, and he has to chase it himself. Craig Moore, Kinesia again, finding so much space. And diving in was Gus McPherson to try to salvage the situation. But Kanisha is doing a lot of damage to the firm with them on right hand side, and he is surely something they have to deal with. Chris McGraw today, we can see him doing the, the blonde hair. He's having a tour of time against Kanisha. Nixon's throw. And the clearance from Gronda. The only player up for the firm is his booster. Crawford is frequently dropping off. Nicholson to Dare. Well, it was a quieter place when Jason Dare rattled in that right foot shot, which gave Stefan, of course, not an earthly. But it's... The volume has been well turned up since then. Rangers with a 3-1 cushion, and they desperately want more. They would love to think they can put this out of sight of Celtic, who still lead by that Chris Sutton goal to nil at Rugby Park.
Crawford to McGroarty. 70 to 69, the goal difference. 98 to 95 in terms of goals scored. Brewster's layoff. Wanted it back. The Rangers have a real hunger to win the title. Playing with passion. Playing with a fair bit of style as well. Avalanche through, and it's another good interception from Bullock. Stilly to Wilson. The two Jimmys both out now. Nicole and Cole Norwood. Just about on the pitch. Alec McLeish doesn't want to stay back either. He's Alec, Mc Alec McLeish's 80th match as the Rangers manager. And in that time, only four domestic defeats. Brewster, that's a, a ball that does no damage at all to the Rangers. You talk about the two Germans, Rob, uh, Paul Lerwin and Nickel, they're, you know, they're, they're in despair at the moment, they're not too sure what to do. I mean, there's not much they can do, Rangers are playing so well, they're putting them under so much pressure. And up front, the movement of the Boer, Canadia, Moles and other lads, is, it's incredible, just so good, it's so difficult to defend against. It's another good bit of ball winning from Lee Bullen, he's been outstanding for Dunfermline in this first half, and uh, uh, the Finland defence has been under terrific pressure. 60% possession for the Rangers, you would swear it was a lot more than that. Amoruso trying to angle that one wide for De Boer. Up went the offside flag. Ronald De Boer doesn't look too happy, nor does the manager. He never does De Boer, this is when he's called offside. Poor ball from Lorenzo Amoruso. He tried to defend the ball right on the left hand side. Yeah. Stevie Crawford giving it his best shot to try to keep that in. Oh, well, time flies, doesn't it? We've played nearly 35 minutes at Ibrox. And Rangers hope they're on the way to. 50th league championship. 3 1 ahead. Newman's pass releases Arbeladze. The short cannon of Gus McPherson. Just as you were wondering whether he would do what he did against Kilmarnock a couple of weeks back. Brewster's header. But he's playing a lone follow up front for Dunfermline, and uh, when he knocks the ball on, he's chasing it himself. He's on his own, I think uh, Barry Nicholson and uh, Stevie Crawford are trying to support him. This really is a ferocious backing for Rangers inside Ibrox, and uh, it really does give them energy. It's a 12th man for him today, as you would expect. And the players are responding to it, they're all working very, very hard. They have to keep this tempo going for complete 90 minutes. De Boer against McGroarty. Shakes off Crawford as well, and rolls in Michael Knowles, who was onside, saved by Stilly. Canisia takes a tumble. No free kick. Well, that's a free kick to... I think he's given an indirect free kick and save the box. Yeah. That's a strange one. Missed the chance there, but Ronald Dubois has to wait. Amoruso shot, still he's saved. This is an earlier one, Michael Moe's unlucky, great ball from Ronald Dubois. Michael Moe's just couldn't get there quick enough. Bullen's clearance, Amoruso climbing high for the header. No one wants this more than Lorenzo Amoruso. McPherson, Brewster, now Gronda, driving towards the danger area, David Gronda, the shot blocked by Amoruso. The former Arsenal man again, and again Amoruso was in the way. And for Brewster, it was noted down for Barry Nicholson, and 
Craig Moore are doing some valuable defensive work there. He read it so well. Great play from Craig Moore. Rangers look just a little bit nervous at the back when the Delfelman put them under pressure, as you would expect. There's so much at stake, they don't want to lose another goal. In the league games so far this season between these two, 6-0 Rangers at East End Park in September. 3-0 Rangers here in November and 3-1 Rangers at East End Park in February. 12 goals Rangers in three games and another three to add to the tally so far in this match. Nicholson for Brewster. Well won by Moore again. Tigerish on the tackle. Won it so well. Gary Mason. And he saw it there before Brewster. Arteta took too long. Won by Gronda. And again, doing the tidying up was Lorenzo Amoruso. Won't be on his way out, and Ibrox uh, wants to go in style. That's a good challenge from Rondan to intercept for Dunfermline. Now Jason Deer. Deer on the transfer list, along with one number of other first team players at Dunfermline. It's Jimmy Calder who brings the changes in the summer. And from McGrotty. The best of clearances. Crawford to Bullen. Amoruso missed it, Moore didn't. Newman to Moles. And the combination of uh, the two former Rangers players, Nicholson and Wilson, won it back. The third one actually passed the ball, the ball very well this morning. Moore beat Brewster. Moles beat Nicholson. Jason Deere giving it away. You can't hear yourself think inside Ibrox. I'm pretty sure Rangers are 3-1 ahead. 1-0 Celtic at Rugby Park. And Rangers at the moment are heading for the title. But don't go away because, as we found in recent months and weeks and days, things can change quickly. Avalanza's cross, Ferson's clearance. Now with Crawford. Sidney Crawford playing a midfield role for Infernal here. With uh, just one striker, and uh, it's a tough shift for Craig Brewster. <laughs> it is, there's no doubt. It's also a tough, a tough shift for uh, Barry Fairness and Michael Arteta in the middle of the park for Rangers. They're heavily outnumbered there, that's why they're feeling they can keep the ball so well. I haven't heard from Chick for a while. Yeah, I think any anyone who is uh, nursing a conspiracy theory we should be down here behind the Dunfermline dugout, Jimmy. Jimmy Calderwood, Jimmy Nicholl, absolutely frantic about the team performance. Calderwood's been out on the edge of the, uh, the technical area the whole match, screaming on his players, having a real go at them for losing possession, which they've done cheap with a couple of times. And Alec McLeish, well, we just made a video with a camera on him. One against one, Craig Brewster against Lorenzo Amoruso, and the shot straight on Stefan Cross. And it was great set-up work there from Gary Mason. It was good play, Gary Mason won the ball, and Brewster's 1v1 on Amoruso, but this is good defending, Rob. He watches the ball, don't dive in, Happy for the, the striker to hit the shot from 25 yards and the belief that his goalkeeper will save it. Forty-two minutes played at Ibrox, Rangers three, Dunfermline one. Michael Moles, Claudio Canesia, shot at Arbalanta for the home team. Jason Deere scored an equaliser, which produced the sounds of silence. Two minutes will be added to the 45, I think that's 47, it's a day for arithmetic, <laughs> isn't it? 
I'm sure you're right. It's calmed down to a frenzy. It has, and uh, it's difficult for Rangers now. The film I've got, as we said, as soon as the Burg is up front, the film are playing five across the park, and it's very difficult to, uh, to break it down. I'm sure that, that's why I'm a clutch trying to get across these players. Be patient, keep the ball, wait for the opening. Chip can tell us what Alec Lucas actually said there. Well, they got Lorenz Amaris, that's two long diagonal balls he's tried to play, neither of them come off. He just gave him the number two sign, which I think that's what he meant, Rob. He didn't get it, he did it twice to, to Lorenz Amaris, so don't give the ball away cheaply. Keep the passes short, keep the ball, is what he's trying to say. You're the man to interpret the hand signals. Here he is again on the ball, Amaris. He's seen a lot of it. Alec McLeish. Not happy a lot of the time and how he's used it, but that's not bad for Kinesia. He couldn't get it down though, and Chris McGrorty knocked the ball out of play. But Kinesia has performed very well. Dunfermline are contemplating making a change before the first half is over, are we here? Details to follow. Jason Dare getting himself in a tight situation, but through from the goal for Newman, and uh, well, that was almost a very costly mistake. Good pressure from the Rangers players here, Jason. They are putting them under pressure. Ronald Dubur trying to find after Newman, but not quick enough to get in. The first throw, McGrorty's header. And that was Stevie Crawford. We'll let you know in a second about the Dunfermline change. But let's see this first. Newman's long throw up went De Boer. Kinesia flicks it on. Chris Sutton has scored again at Rugby Park. It's 2-0 Celtic, both from Sutton. And the goal difference is level again at 70 apiece. The most incredible finish to this championship campaign. Let's hear about that substitution, which I think is going to be made at half-time, Jack. Yeah, they've delayed it. They're going to put on Gary Dempsey, take off David Grondon. They were going to do it, um, I mean, with the dying seconds of this half, but that switch will now be made at half-time. So it's going to be Dempsey on, Grondon off. Nicholson for Dunfermline. Newman saw the pass coming and got there before Deere. Dunfermline scrapping hard here, giving it their best shot, no doubt about that. But at times, Rangers have been rampant. And uh, don't you worry, Ward is getting through about the scoreline from Rugby Park. And uh, the Rangers players will be able to tell from the reaction of the supporters exactly what's happening. Played in by Michael Moles to Ronald De Boer, back for Kinesia. And Lee Bullen passes the ball away to safety and gets it back from there. Alec McLeish was saying pre-match, no one will need to tell me the scoreline. I'll know exactly from the support. It's 3-1 Rangers against Dunfermline. <laughs> 45 minutes away from a title party. That's the hope of Alec McLeish. But there's work to be done. Second half underway. Rangers 3-1 ahead. And uh, don't forget that uh, on BBC One Scotland you'll miss nothing either of what's happening down the road at Rugby Park. 2-0 there so far for Celtic with Chris Sutton's 18th and 19th goals of the season. I'm just thinking, Rob, as well, how important the substitutes could be today. The Rangers players especially are working so hard to try and get goals eventually become tired. Neil McCann is on for Rangers as a substitute, and that was McCann almost immediately creating another goal. Claudia Kanija's the one that's off. 
Kanisha off, McCann on, and Rangers sneaked that one through. <laughs> I think that was tactical. And also to Bowles. Arteta to Rickson. Now Arvaladze, who is switched over to the right-hand side with McCann down the left. Rangers looking to get more of a supply in from the left-hand side. That's aimed from Amoruso at McCann again. And putting the pressure on Lee Bullen and winning the first corner of the second half. Great pace from Neil McCann. It's a, it's a different problem that Lee Bullen's got in the right-back position. Neil McCann is so quick, and when he gets there, his delivery's normally so good. A minute and a half into the second half, McCann's corner, Bullen's header, and Arteta's... Shot flies too high. Chick's normally very quick to let us know about substitutions. Well, Neil McCann, the invisible man, he came on at half time. The fourth official, I don't think, was informed properly. Dougie Smith, he would look amazed as you sounded in your commentary when McCann get the ball. Uh, I think the Rangers bench have apologised. Dougie Smith turned around to them. It was Kanija who's come off. He's now made his way to the bench. It's Sandy spotted, but no official confirmation. Uh, Dougie Smith, the fourth official, as astonished as the rest of us. My office tomorrow morning, okay? Okay. <laughs> That's for De Burt. Danny Dempsey's first involvement. And Russo. Barry Ferguson looking to get his hands on the trophy before the afternoon is out. A calm beginning to the second half, relatively speaking, because it was a frantic start to the first half. I think it's different for Rangers, Rob, that the film have got nine players behind the ball, five across the back, four across the middle. Not a lot of space to play in. Michael Moles peeled away from Scott Wilson, and the Dunfermline defender from that point onwards was always struggling, and he hacked Moles to the ground, and he's conceded a free kick just a few yards outside the penalty box. It's a late tackle from Scott Wilson there, but Michael Moles does that so well. Collects the ball, just a, a little change of direction, and it's so hard to defend. Scott Wilson escapes without a yellow card. He's had 11 already this season. Derek Stilly has produced a couple of good stops so far, but beaten three times already. Amaruso with the free kick. Well struck. Good positioning from Derek Stilly. That made the save fairly straightforward. It's a, it's a short run-up from Amoruso. Gets on target, decent pace on the ball by the goalkeeper, getting his wall right, getting his angles right. Stevie Crawford, Lee Bullen, Gus McPherson. It's Gary Dempsey. Amoruso is up and under. Deals with it himself. Dempsey knocked over by McCann, and fell one free kick. I'm just looking at the film for Mason Dempsey's going to play wide on the right-hand side now. And Jason Dare's moved across to the left-hand side when Drummond has gone off. Williams free kick, Brewster's header, in goes Jason Dare. Russo is stretching to get that away. Teta, De Boer. Lands it back to Rickson. Confirmed working hard, but they look to keep up that work rate. If they're not to suffer a heavy defeat here, fouled by McGrorty or Avalanza there. Michael Moles wins so many free kicks because his touch and control and hold up abilities are so good. That one's through determination, though, actually. He'd lost the ball, but fought hard to win it back. Gus McPherson got it the second time. His first touch wasn't so sure. He'll be assistant manager at St. Mirren next season. Arthur Newman. One of the ball, couldn't get on the end of the pass. Stevie Crawford back at the edge of his own penalty area to clear. Tells a story. Craig Moore. 
Useful for Ronald De Boer. Still De Boer! Wide! Great effort. That's a chance. Great ball from Craig Boer. Ronald De Boer again. He finds so much space inside the box. Gets the break there. It's a little ricochet. But he didn't realise that actually more time than he had there. Snatched at it towards the end. But great movement, great pace. Just here, if he just delays half a second, I'm sure we get more on the ball. Well, six and a half, second half minutes played, and we haven't had a goal. McPherson back to Stilling. Good work for Wilson. And Gorty. As well won by Arteta as Jason Deere dwelled on the ball. And uh, his manager wasn't too pleased, let me tell you. At times, there's no question Finland have been able to do about it. Rangers with the bulk of the possession, as you'd expect. And they won't go. Avalanza to Rickson. Into the feet of the Burgood step over. Moles has it. Now Ferguson. Arthur Newman. Neil McCann, the second half substitutes. Good cross for the Burr through the Moles. Handball. Free kick. I think Michael Moles. He was unlucky, Moles. Yeah. McCann's flick finds De Burr. Now, chance for Neil McCann to use his pace. There's a look in the middle. Michael Moles waiting. Gus McPherson positioned himself well. Good defending from Gus McPherson, but. I can't heal, help feel Neil McCann could drive in towards goal here. He's got beyond the defenders. Bowles can't really get there in time. Neil yeah, McCann was going to take the corner, but Neil De Boer issued instructions. It's De Boer's delivery and it's too strong. But as we know, Alicia doesn't give those up. Good turn. Uh, not a bad ball in. It was almost a carbon copy of what he did in the first half to create Rangers' third goal. Good determination again. It's a poor corner from Ron De Boer. Too much on the ball. Nobody in that area. Bam Russo does well here. A little shimmy. But just can't keep it in the park. Brewster's header down from there. No free kick. Ferguson to Arteta. Celtic have a penalty we hear at Rugby Park, so a chance to go 3-0 ahead. If they score, they will be in pole position. Rickson to Avalanta. And Alan Thompson's going to take the kick at Rugby Park. And we'll let you know immediately we have the outcome. I think we'll know soon enough. Might go very quiet around here. Rickson's throw. McPherson's header. Straight back to Fernando Rickson. Rickson's cross. And a throw off ahead of Scott Wilson. On its way behind corner kick. And Celtic have a third goal. And Celtic are in pole position. 3 0 Celtic at Rugby Park. 3 1 Rangers at Ibrox. That pendulum has swung again. In from Neil McCann, terrific corner, whipped it at pace under the crossbar, seen again. That's a great ball from Neil McCann. Neil McCann's delivery again, Amoruso flung himself at it, Craig Brewer chasing. Now with Newman. We'll show you that goal when we've got a chance from Rugby Park. 
Rickson launches it into the area for Amoruso, who'd stayed up. Wilson powered it clear, that was McPherson, and his header goes straight to Ferguson. Craig Moore, Mikel Arteta. Now, Neil McCann, that's what that goal from Alan Thompson has done to the state of the parties. Hope you're following this, that's not easy. Goal difference is ahead of goals scored and how this has all worked out. That's why that Celtic goal has put Celtic in the leading role. And uh, word has got around here, don't worry about that. Good play from the bar, forces the corner, turned behind by Bullen as we look at the Alan Thompson penalty, which has put Celtic 3-0 up at Rugby Park. Two for Sutton, one for Thompson, 3-0 Celtic. McCann's corner, lands at the feet of Elmaruso, now Avalanta! The shot was blocked by Chris McGrawty, Rangers scream for the penalty, and Stuart Dougal points towards the corner flag. Stuart Dougal, his first look was towards the assistant referee in the near side. It's a good ball in, breaks down the Russo. Adelaide hits it well. I'm not quite sure where that hits him, to be honest with you. So close to the player. McCann's corner. Craig Moore leapt high, but so did Lee Bullen. Flipped it away from Moore. It's a corner kick on the other side. We'll maybe have a look at another angle of that uh, incident uh, just once this is finished with, to see how strong that claim was for the penalty. Neil McCann tries again. Amaruso hits the deck. Moore missed the shot. And Scott Wilson thumped it clear. Lorenzo well, Amaruso's not happy with that incident at all. He well, feels he was brought down. Never a dull moment, but let's decide on this. It's at his hand, there's no question about that, whether his hand's across the front of his body. I'm not too sure. Avalanche connects well. Yeah, that's a penalty. <laughs> Ronald de Burt. Back to Fernando Rixon. And a feeling of injustice among the Rangers players. They were quickly around Stuart Dougal. There was a, a big reaction when that happened. And you got the feeling at the time that it was a strong claim. And I think that rerun bears it out. We'll have another look at it in a second to see if it's another angle tells us anything more. That's a back pass from Gus McPherson. It was picked up by Derek Stilley. And Gus McPherson then pushed Stuart Dougal. And McPherson is in big bother here. Rangers trying to get the ball back from the goalkeeper. Well, there's trouble brewing here for Gus McPherson. It just simply hasn't got a complete ball, but it was a pass back. I think it took a deflection on the way back to the goalkeeper, but it was deliberately passed back towards him. And when that happens, the goalkeeper can't pick it up. So Rangers now have the chance to get themselves back in front after this controversial incident, but. Gus McPherson surely could have no complaints, he passed it back, it took a deflection, Derek still he picked it up. Yeah, it did hit a Rangers player, but, you know, it's accidental, it's hit an awful, and you've got to class that as a pass back. I think Gus McPherson's been yellow carded, and uh, you'd be surprised if not, maybe lucky not to see red there. Can Rangers score their fourth goal? Stuart Dougal's having to his money there today. So many bodies inside that, on the goal line, almost inside the goal net. But remember, it's indirect, it can't go straight in, it's quite a hit a player. Or a touch and then a hit. There's going to be one incredible charge towards the ball here. There's a theory of he just actually hit it towards the goal anyway, it'll hit somebody. Amoruso! Well, the one thing you don't want to do in that sort of situation is fail to hit the target. You've got to hit the target, you've got to hit a body in there. He's leaning back as he hits it. That's what takes the, the ball way over the crossbar. You can only imagine Alec McLeish will be absolutely furious there as Amoruso blazes it over the top. Anyone else, and there was a chance of it either going in or being deflected in. The one thing you didn't want to do was miss the target completely. Check. 
Yeah, well, you can imagine his reaction, and he would tell you, but Rangers are going to make a change, Rob. I think Stephen Thompson is going to be introduced up front. I just had a little powwow at the moment, the back Dan Fouders and Andy Watson, but I think Stephen Thompson, yeah, will be coming on for Rangers. And I can tell you who's coming off, it's Michael Malls. Malls off, Thompson on in a matter of minutes. Neil McCann on the ball. Took a deflection on its way in. Bruno de Boer tried to connect with the diving header. And what a good challenge that was from Gary Mason. It's a great challenge, so important. Gary Mason playing a, a strange position today for him. McCann with the corner. Craig Moore tried to win the header. Back it goes to the Rangers substitute. Back onto his right foot. And now with Newman. Arthur Newman's cross, but Michael Moles was on the ground. Moles feeling in the small of his back. And that's it for Moles. Scored the first goal. 14 goals for the season. He's off. And Stephen Thompson on as Rangers try a different approach. Michael Moles has played well today, he's done his bit, he scored the goal, he's worked really hard, he looks tired now. Stephen Thompson gives him a, a variation, more of a target man type, trying to ruffle up the defender, the film defenders. In from McCann, Wilson headed it away, now Ferguson, back to Neil McCann. Avalanza got it back across, and Gus McPherson did well. Did well to clear it, but it was straight at Rickson. Poor ball in from Rickson, and the uh, Rangers fans didn't fancy it one little bit. Rooster to Crawford. Dempsey sprinting through the middle. Lee Bullen plays it in. Jason Dare is there. Craig Brewster! Wonder save from Stefan Gloss. And you just wonder if that, the final reckoning, could be a title winning save. Curled it with his left foot to Brewster. He was heading in, and wonderful goalkeeping not for the first time this season. Uh, the outstanding Stefan Cross. It's a free kick. Yeah, they missed the new McCann that time. But great break, break from the filmer. Culminating in the, the Brewster shot. Stefan Cross again, having to keep his concentration. 3 0 Celtic at Rugby Park. 3 1 Rangers at Ibrox. Celtic have the edge. Rangers look to score. McCann's delivery! To Burrell's header! 4 1 Rangers! That's a magnificent header. What well a ball from Neil McCann. Roll the bird, he does that so often. It's not by accident, and it's just great play. It's a marvellous ball in, asking to get attacked, and you won't find any better striking than that. Ronald De Boer's 20th goal of the season. It's 4-1 to Celtic's 3-0 on this dramatic final day. If you're not on the edge of your seat, you should be. It's unbelievable. It's absolutely brilliant. There's tremendous atmosphere here. I'm sure it's the same at Rugby Park. So that means the goal difference is again identical at 71. Rangers have scored two goals more. 99, just one short of a century of Premier League goals. And what sort of reaction will there be if Rangers do hit the 100? I think the fans might hit the roof. This game here, when you're watching Rangers have to keep going. And on... Uh, Radio Scotland, in either ear, the message is the same. It's close. So, so close. If you go back to that uh, save from Stefan Kloss as well a few minutes ago, Rob, how vital can that be now? Shot at Avaladza against Chris McGrotty. Now Fernando Rickson. Rangers have now scored 16 league goals against Dunfermline in four games this season. 
Khan turns away from Mason, gets to the byline, and Stephen Thompson scores Rangers' 100th league goal of the season. It's the fifth against Dunfermline, and it might be the goal that points Rangers towards the championship. It's a brilliant piece of play from Neil McCann down the left-hand side. That man there, Stephen Thompson, he'll get the... The glory was sticking in the back of the net, but watch this, he cut across the defender, hard and low, so hard to defend against. He gets the break, no question about that, but you've got to be there, got to be attacking it. But don't underestimate Neil McCann here. Great ball in. Yeah, it was Lee Bullen who tried to clear it, Sandy, and Lee Bullen played it off Stephen Thompson into the back of the net. Rangers weren't really bothered about how it went in, and Alec McLeish celebrates a fifth Rangers goal. Dunfermline are uh, going to make a change. It will be Scott Walker coming up. Gus McPherson heading off. It's an incredible noise at Ibrox. 100 Premier League goals for Rangers. 97 to Celtic. And Rangers' goal difference is one better as well. How will Celtic respond at Rugby Park? We just saw Henry Larson hitting the post. And everything matters. Shots against the post. Saves like the one we saw from Stefan Poss. Rickson's throw that came off Wilson's head. Desperation from Dempsey to try to get the ball away. He failed. Newman's cross. Scott Wilson. Had to put it behind because Stephen Thompson was loitering behind him. It's just constant pressure now from Rangers. They've down both sides, right-hand side, left-hand side. That man there, Stephen Thompson, he's, he will make a difference only because his presence in the air. And I'm sure the balls will keep flooding towards this still in the Dunfermline goal. Neil McCann plays in the corner. Still, he was stretching to palm the ball away. Arteta against McGroti. Arteta teasing and tormenting, and plays it in for Stephen Thompson, and the header drops just wide. That can only be inches past the post. Good play from Mikel Arteta. Buys a bit of time, eventually plays it in. Thompson does really well to get up so high, just can't get it on target. Well, Thompson didn't score there, but he did score here. Set up by McCann's cutback. In off Thompson. 5 1 Rangers. Stephen Thompson's second goal for Rangers. He started only once. Alan McLeish there talking to Barry Ferguson. I just wonder what the instruction will be. They've got to keep going for me. They can't take the chance that Celtic won't score any more goals. I think they have to keep flooding forward. Chick knows what was said there, I think. There was a message to pass on to Mikel Arteta. He feels that Arteta's getting forward too much, just abandoning the midfield. Alec McLeish knows exactly the score at Rugby Park. He wants to hold it in the midfield, not get forward to, with too much abandon. They've got a grip of the championship, and it was a message from Ferguson to, to Arteta. Basically, the old one, just keep your shape. Never fails, that one. 70 minutes gone at Ibrox. 5-1. 3-0 Celtic at Rugby Park. Neil McCann has done a lot of good work since coming on. He's done exactly what Alec McLeish wanted him to do. He's so quick down that left-hand side. They deliver into the boxes. There's two goals, both exceptional. I'm just looking at the film as we only Scott Walker's on and Gus McPherson, and he's going to try and pick up Stephen Thompson, try and combat him in the air. Free kick. Given against the challenge on Arteta. I'm just looking at the clock, Rob, there's still 19 minutes to go. Yep. There could be a few thrills and spills to come. That old pendulum might just be swinging again. It is a deafening din in Ibrox. And for a lot of the Rangers supporters, the party has begun already. But uh, they may just have to delay it slightly. That's a good challenge from Mason on Rickson.
Now De Boer, Rexon, Avalanza, given away, Nicholson, Crawford, Brewster, good touch. Gary Dempsey. Lee Bullen, so strong in the first half, uh, he's being stretched in the second by Neil McCann, but uh, for me, he hasn't been nominated for any of the Player of the Year trophies, but for me, Stefan Kloss has been simply immense for Rangers this season, and this just about sums it up. The save from Craig Brewster, two hands solidly behind the shot, and if Rangers do win the title, a lot of credit has to go to him. He's been great, he's, he's been on his toes again there, but this is where, looking at Stefan Kloss, Ronald De Boer was pulled back by Gary Mason. And there's another man who's made a huge contribution to the Rangers' season, 20 goals, and he's crafted quite a few as well. Celebration about to begin. Arteta's free kick, Thompson's header, that drops into the arms of Derek Stilly. Well, Derek still he's made a few good stops, but he's still been beaten five times. That's, that tells you about the intensity of the pressure on the Dunfermline goal. He's been, he's been a busy man, Derek Stilley. As you say, Rob, if you look at all five goals, didn't have much chance to save any. Good running from Ronald De Boer, good timing on the run. It keeps him on sides, but he's struggling to catch that, and he did well. That's all down to grit and determination from De Boer that ranges off the corner. He really shouldn't have caught that ball. He's not the, the quickest of players, but immense uh, determination there to knock that ball across goal and win the corner. McCann, he's done a lot of damage already. Avalanza was there. Amaruso can't keep the header down. That was a chance. He's unlucky there at Amaruso. Really, he can't wait the ball dropping. He's got to attack it. Otherwise, the defender's going to clear it. He's up early, gets to it first, but really can't go over the top of it to get it down on target. Now, don't forget, man of the match, and all the excitement, if you could. We probably have, but uh, 0900 10 225 is the number. Who's your man of the match from here? Sandy will decide, and Derek White will decide at Rugby Park who the top man was then there. 3 0 Celtic still, 5 1 Rangers. Rangers are just ahead. One ahead on goal difference as this title comes to the most incredible climax. 49,731 inside Ibrox. And just about everyone captivated by what's happening in front of them. Ali Ferguson sprays a pass wide for Avaladze, seemed to rear up off the pitch, which confused Stevie Crawford, and shot at Avaladze. <laughs> Nearly 75 minutes gone. Stephen Thompson giving it his all. Rickson, Thompson, De Boer tries to pick up the pieces. Dunfermline hemmed in. McCann, Newman has a lot of space, he slides it through instead and shot to Avaladze offside. Arthur Newman was a strong option there because he had so much room in the wide position. You know, McCann had tons of time to look up and play the pass and decide where he was going to go to. They just fans, I'm not sure if they're too nervous or not now. Tense. In pole position. Tense, nervous, headache. <laughs> pressure, Those pressure. Those nails are bitten down to the quick. Jason Dare's cross. Amaruso's header. And don't forget that Fermlin goal would change everything. Here's cross flicked off Rickson's head, down from Brewster, and Barry Nicholson disappointed with himself that he couldn't keep the half volley down. They had time there, Barry Nicholson. The ball comes back to him, laid back to him here. He's got time to look up and hit the target, but got it all wrong.
It's going to be McGarty for McGrorty. Not easy to say, not easy to spell, but uh, one youngster for another. Mark McGarty, the son of a, a Dunfermline hero of old. McGarty's going to go and play right back, Rob. Lee Bullen over to the left hand side to play left back. Rangers will feel as if they've almost got one hand on the trophy. But things can change, don't we know it? It's happened so often. The balance has been tilted so many times in this amazing title race. And you get the feeling that even with 13 minutes left here, it's not over until that fat lady or chick gets up to sing. <laughs> it's been a brilliant season. We've seen so many live games in the BBC. So exciting, lots of goals, especially the, the finale. Our 53rd and 54th live matches of the season from BBC Scotland this Sunday afternoon. And number 55 will be this one at Hamden, the Tennant Scottish Cup final next Saturday. Dundee against Rangers. Rangers could be shooting for the treble. Dundee will see it their way from 10 past 12. Rickson's throw. Wilson won the header. Wilson? I sound like Captain Munring at times when I say that, don't I? <laughs> Amoruso charging forward alongside of Arthur Newman. Trying to get round the outside. Good run from Newman. Great ball in for De Boer. And desperate measures needed by Lee Bullen. Lovely ball in from Newman. They play again. Uh, uh, Arthur Newman down the left hand side. Marvellous ball in. The Fellman the actually defended very well today. Tonight, what's the time done for you? <laughs> <laughs> Ferguson. Back to Newman. Everyone wants the ball in this Rangers side. Looking for goal number six. Neil McCann supplies the cross. Stephen Thompson won the header. Dangerous header from Stevie Crawford and Barry Ferguson shot blocked. Nicholson to Brewster. Then Furman trying to stem the tide and now trying to start a counter attack. Crawford having a look at what's on. Bad pass for Brewster. All was chasing as well. Flicks it on. Diving header away by Barry Ferguson. Wilson to Dare. Flicked on to Brewster. Jason Dare again. Wonderful challenge from Craig Moore. That's exactly why he's there. He does it so well. That's a great interception from Craig Moore. Jason Dare was almost in the penalty spot. I'm sure he would have scored. Defended well against Thompson and Wilson. Gary Dempsey. Barry Nicholson. The state of the parties is like that. 94 points apiece, heading for 97. One goal in it in terms of difference, three goals in it in terms of goals scored. Rangers have their noses in front. Celtic pushing for more goals in Ayrshire. Rangers looking for another one here at Ibrox against under a siege Dunfermline. There could be more goals, Rob, because I tell you what, there's two sets of tired players right there now. Rangers have been continually taking the, the game to Dunfermline, and that takes a lot of energy. Dunfermline having to defend and run all over the place. We hear Celtic have another penalty at Rugby Park. Uh, we'll give you the details shortly. So Celtic might be about to score again, but hold your horses, it hasn't happened yet, and in a few moments you'll see it. That game's on BBC Two Scotland, of course, and on BBC One Scotland, a bit of both. Majoring on Rangers against Dunfermline. Great turn from De Boer, through for Thompson. Neil McCann. 
And Alan Thompson has missed his second penalty at Rugby Park and just listen to the reaction at Ibrox. Thompson, who's done so much to point Celtic towards the UEFA Cup final and this title challenge, has blazed his effort over the top at Rugby Park. McCann's corner, the Burrows header on target, saved by Stilly. Good corner kick again from Neil McCann. Not that wrong, the Burr is in there again. He's been exceptional again today. So important. Full of class. Gets there first again. On target. And close to the biggest roar of the afternoon at Ibrox. That reaction to an incident happening in Ayrshire. Because Alan Thompson's missed penalty might just be the final twist in the tail. And Alec McLeish will be passing that information on to his players. And he won't be happy till another couple of goals have gone in to make things safe, to put things beyond Celtic. How much more passion and resistance is there from Celtic at Rugby Park? Can you remember a final day in the championship like this? Oh, Sandy, can he play in one? I can. Is that it? Unfortunately, <laughs> I've just got to say that. Unfortunately, someone has to be disappointed. It was that that day. Celtic with the, the team with the trophy. So much tension. And only the final whistle will bring a release. Ferguson, yellow carded. That won't bother him if he can pick up the trophy by the time we're finished at Ibrox. Lee Bullen, Scott Walker, Barry Nicholson, now Craig Brewster. Good turn, tried to put it through for Nicholson. Amoruso read it well. Thompson's layoff to Arteta. Powers away from Scott Wilson. He was tripped by the Dunfermline defender. And he may have escaped the yellow card earlier. He won't escape that time, and that's his 12th booking of the season. This is cynical, that's deliberate, Rob. Don't like to see that. Arteta showed great skill, pace to get beyond the big defender. Really just taking him out of the game. Fully deserved yellow. It's 4 0 Celtic, it's 5 1 Rangers. It's so, so tight. Identical goal differences. Rangers have scored more goals. That's the only way you can put any daylight between Rangers and Celtic. There it is, 100 to 98. That's the crucial figure at the end. It's 72 to 72 in goal difference. And obviously both teams will be, by the end of the afternoon, on 97 points. You've watched every thrill and every spill on the BBC this season, and nothing has been more exciting or more tense or more gripping than this final day drama. Alec McLeish tries to calm his players, but uh, Chick, good luck to him. It's unbelievable the tension down here. He's been out at the edge of that dugout throughout the second half. He knows exactly what's going on at Robbie Park, and he knows that another goal would probably be enough for Rangers at this time. He's encouraged them forward. He's thought about a substitution two or three times. That was a dangerous pass from Lee Bullen that almost set up Arvalanta. Five one Rangers, four 0 Celta. It's incredible. And the Rangers players that we've been watching just now, they have to keep going. One more goal at Robbie Park, the trophy goes that way. If Rangers get it, it stays here. Rangers have it back. Stevie Crawford lost it. Arteta to McCann. Ronald De Boers sprinting through the middle. Scott Walker back to Derek Stilly.
It's Rangers title at the moment, but another Celtic goal, and it swings the other way. Can Celtic summon one last effort at Rugby Park? Can Rangers find another goal here against Unfermline? Arteta's pass finds its way through to McCann. Good cut out from Gary Mason, and he's heading for De Boer. And loaded by Mark McGarty. Back with Rickson. I tell you, Rob, I seen the game at Rugby Park, I haven't seen Kilmarnock, but Unfermline have worked really hard. No one can accuse the the Fairman players of lying, of lying down, that's for certain. Three minutes will be added, so we've got just over five minutes remaining at Ibrox. Rickson's throw. Thompson won the header. Back with Rickson. Reverse pass from McCann for Newman. Thompson! It stays out! So close to number six. And that would have sealed it for Rangers, maybe. <laughs> Stephen Thompson can't believe it. It's so well to get there. It's off the jumps in the post and the crossbar and how often does that type of situation end up with the ball in the back of the net? Still, he was well beaten. And the Rangers fans were looking for the rustling of the net. Didn't happen. Thompson's been a big problem, big threat to Dunfermline since he came on. Scored once, nearly scored twice. Still 5-1. Ronald De Boer tried to turn that back to Arthur Newman. Craig Brewster. Never has Craig Brewster worked harder than he's worked here. Dunfermline have a good break on. Goes Stevie Crawford, up went Rickson and Moore together. A little bit nervy, the Rangers defending there. Amoruso down the line for Neil McCann. That's good work from Derek Stilley. Had to be quick. That's great play from the goalkeeper. Playing the sweeper role there. Neil McCann so fast, he stayed onside. He's made a different second half. Nearly 90 minutes up at Ibrox. Three minutes to be added here. 5 1 Rangers, 4 0 Celtic. Identical goal difference between the old third pair. Rangers in front on goals scored, having totaled 100 Premier League goals in the course of this sensational Sunday afternoon. And Fenman have lost it. Stephen Thompson meanders his way through. Stephen Thompson's shot. Derek still is safe. And again. Free kick. That was a free kick. Stuart Dougal ruling that that was taken out of the hands of the goalkeeper by Neil McCann. And I think he's right. Well, the goalkeeper looked to have it. Stephen Thompson does really well here, driving forward. What's on his left foot? His stronger foot. It's a half decent shot. There's a chance for McCann to get there. I think the referee was right. Still he had it both hands. Yeah, he's got it there by the time Neil McCann makes contact. Credit to the referee, not a crazy often here. <laughs> he's had a good game, Stuart Dougal. 91 minutes. Now, after Fremont had a score, there's another story. Bullock. Dale. Brewster. Barry Nicholson darting through. And the short escorts it back to Stefan Kloss. Newman summoning up every ounce of energy to get forward in his closing minutes. McCann gets it back from De Boer. Neil McCann. It's a penalty. It's a penalty against Mark McGarty. And Rangers could close this out with a late penalty. Thompson missed his at Rugby Park. Can Rangers make a can? Remember, they've missed three in the last few weeks. It's a great move though from Rangers to win the penalty kick. Neil McCann, so impressive second half. His pace has been unbelievable, and I wonder who'll take it. He's the captain. 
You've got Ronald De Boer as well. Talking to Alan McLeish at this moment. Nicola Teta's round about the ball as well. Arteta, it was. He scored at Dead Spark after Barry Ferguson had missed twice in the same game. And it's he who offers himself to take all the pressure on his young shoulders. Mikel Arteta in his first season at Rangers could clinch the title for his team. Ronald De Boer can't look. He's right in front of Alec McLeish. He can't look at the, the penalty. Ronald De Boer will wait for the reaction from the crowd to tell him what's happened here. This could be the championship winning goal if Mikel Arteta can hold his nerve. He can! Rangers 6, Dunfermline 1, and the championship appears to be Rangers. A perfect penalty kick, lots of guts from Arteta to take it in the first place, but that's composure. He makes his mind up, he's got pace in the ball, there's power on it, it's right in the corner, giving the goalkeeper no chance, and he looks really happy. And never has there been a more valuable goal for Rangers than that one. 6-1 Rangers. 4-0 Celtic, and there's the man of the match. Yes, it's Ronald Dubois, my man of the match, so it's been a fabulous performance from Rangers to score six goals against anyone, but he's been special again. So determined, so much quality. He's my backer, Scott, the man of the match. Rangers hope they've won the title. It's been such a nail-biting climax to the championship campaign that uh, they won't want to launch into full celebration mode until they know the final score from Rugby Park. It's 4-0 Celtic, 6-1 Rangers here against Dunfermline. If the scoreline stay that way, Rangers have the title. Celtic looking to salvage the situation. For the final whistle goes at Rugby Park. Rangers have won their 50th title. Alec McLeish has landed his fourth trophy in 18 months, and he could make it five next weekend with the Tennant Scottish Cup. The pendulum has constantly swung back and fro between Rangers and Celtic. Finally, it rests at Ibrox, and what a job Alec McLeish has done, but what a performance he's got out of his squad. It's total transformation. It's total jubilation. And a hug from Lex Gold of the Premier League. A mammoth party is about to begin. Ladies and gentlemen, the back of Scotland... Up steps, Barry Ferguson. 2002-2003, Rangers Rangers are champions!
if things didn't go our way. But, but I always have faith in these guys. They're not a bad team. They've exceeded my expectations. They've been fantastic. Consistency this season and some of the football has been wonderful. And to let you get on with your own part here, suffice to say, it's a wonderful privilege to be the manager of Rangers Football Club.